recognizing other distracted drivers can prevent you from perceiving or reaching, reacting correctly in time to prevent a crash. Watch for vehicles that may drift over the lane divider lines or within their own lane. Vehicles traveling at inconsistent speeds. Drivers who are preoccupied with maps, food, cigarettes, cell phones, or other objects. Drivers who appear to be involved in conversations with their passengers. Give a distracted driver plenty of room and maintain your safe following distance. Be very careful when passing a driver who seems to be distracted. The other driver may not be aware of your presence and they may drift in front of you. Section 2.10 Aggressive Drivers Road Rage Section 2.10.1 What is it? Aggressive driving and road rage is not a new problem. However, in today's world, where heavy and slow moving traffic and tight schedules are the norm, more and more drivers are taking out their anger and frustration in their vehicles. Crowded roads leave little room for error, leading to suspicion and hostility among drivers and encouraging them to take personally the mistakes of other drivers. Aggressive driving is the act of operating a motor vehicle in a selfish, bold, or pushy manner without regard for the rights or safety of others. Road rage is operating a motor vehicle with the intent of doing harm to others or physically assaulting a driver or their vehicle. Section 2.10.2 Don't be an aggressive driver. How you feel before you even start your vehicle has a lot to do with how stress will affect you while driving. Reduce your stress before and while you drive. Listen to quote unquote easy easy listening end quote music. Give the drive your full attention. Don't allow yourself to become distracted by talking on your cell phone, eating, etc. Be realistic about your travel time. Expect delays because of traffic, construction, or bad weather, and make allowances. If you're going to be later than you expected, deal with it. Take a deep breath and accept the delay. Give other drivers the benefit of the doubt. Try to imagine why he or she is driving that way. Whatever their reason, it has nothing to do with you. Slow down and keep your following distance reasonable. Don't drive slowly in the left lane of traffic. Avoid gestures. Keep your hands on the wheel. Avoid making any gestures that might anger another driver. Even seemingly harmless expressions of irritation like shaking your head. Be a cautious and courteous driver. If another driver seems eager to get in front of you, say, quote unquote, be my guest. This response will soon become a habit and you won't be as offended by other drivers' actions. Section 2.10.3 what you should do when confronted by an aggressive driver. First and foremost, make every attempt to get out of their way. Put your pride in the back seat. Do not challenge them by speeding up or attempting to hold your own in your travel lane. Avoid eye contact. Ignore gestures and refuse to react to them. Report aggressive drivers to the appropriate authorities by providing a vehicle description license number, location and, if possible, direction of travel. If you have a cell phone and can view it safely, call the police. 
if an aggressive driver is involved in a crash far farther down the road, stop at a safe distance from the crash scene, wait for the police to arrive, and report the driving behavior that you witnessed. Subsections 2.9 and 2.10 test your knowledge. 1. What are some tips to follow so you won't become a distracted driver? 2. How do you use in-vehicle communications equipment cautiously? 3. How do you recognize a distracted driver? 4. What is the difference between aggressive driving and road rage? 5. What should you do when confronted with an aggressive driver? 6. What are some things you can do to reduce your stress before and while you drive? These questions may be on a test. If you can't answer them all, reread subsections 2.9 and 2.10. Section 2.11, driving at night. Section 2.11.1 is more dangerous. You are at greater risk when you drive at night. Drivers can't see hazards as quickly as in daylight, so they have much less time to respond. Drivers caught by surprise are less able to avoid a crash. The problems of night driving involve the driver, the roadway, and the vehicle. Section 2.11.2 .2, Driver Factors Vision People can't sleep, see as sharply at night or in dim light. Also, their eyes need time to adjust to seeing in dim light. Most people have noticed this when walking into a dark movie theater. Glare. Drivers can be blinded for a short time by bright light. It takes time to recover from this blindness. Older drivers are especially bothered by glare. Most people have been temporarily blinded by camera flash units or by high beams of an oncoming vehicle. It can take several seconds to recover from glare. Even two seconds of glare blindness can be dangerous. A vehicle going 55 miles per hour will travel more than half the distance of a football field during that time. Don't look directly at bright lights when driving. Look at the right side of the road. Watch the sidelines when someone coming toward you has very bright lights on. Fatigue and lack of alertness. Fatigue, being tired, and lack of alertness are bigger problems at night. The body's need for sleep is beyond a person's control. Most people are less alert at night, especially after midnight. This is particularly true if you have been driving for a long time. Drivers may not see hazards as soon or react as quickly, so the chance of a crash is greater. If you are sleepy, the only safe cure is to get off the road and get some sleep. If you don't, you risk your life and the lives of others. Section 2.11.3, Roadway Factors, Poor Lighting. In the daytime, there is usually enough light to see well. This is not true at night. Some areas may have bright street lights, but many areas will have poor lighting. On most roads, you will probably have to depend entirely on your headlights. Less lights means you will not be able to see hazards as well as in the daytime. Road users who do not have lights are hard to see. There are many accidents at night involving pedestrians, joggers, bicyclists, and animals, even when there are lights. The road scene can be confusing.
traffic signals and hazards can be hard to see against a background of signs, shop windows, and other lights. Drive slower when lighting is poor or confusing. Drive slowly enough to be sure you can stop in the distance you can see ahead. Drunk drivers. Drunk drivers and drivers under the influence of drugs are a hazard to themselves and to you. Be especially alert around the closing times for bars and taverns. Watch for drivers who have trouble staying in their lane or maintaining speed, who stop without reason or show other signs of being under the influence of alcohol or drugs. Section 2.11.4 Vehicle Factors Headlights At night, your headlights will usually be the main source of light for you to see by and for others to see you. You can't see nearly as much with your headlights as you can see in the daytime. With low beams, you can see ahead about 250 feet, and with high beams, about 350 to 500 feet. You must adjust your speed to keep your stopping distance within your sight distance. This means going slowly enough to be able to stop within the range of your headlights. Otherwise, by the time you see a hazard, you will not have time to stop. Night driving can be more dangerous if you have problems with your headlights. Dirty headlights may give only half the light they should. This cuts down your ability to see and makes it harder for others to see you. Make sure your headlights are clean and working. Headlights can be out of adjustment. If they don't point in the right direction, they won't give you a good view and they can blind other drivers. Have a qualified person make sure that they are adjusted properly. Other lights. In order for you to be seen easily, the following must be clean and working properly. Reflectors. Marker lights, clearance lights, tail lights, identification lights, turn signals and brake lights. At night, your turn signals and brake lights are even more important for telling other drivers what you intend to do. Make sure you have clean working turn signals and stop lights, windshield and mirrors. It is more important at night than in the daytime to have a clean windshield and clean mirrors. Bright lights at night can cause dirt on your windshield or mirrors to create a glare of its own, blocking your view. Most people have experienced driving toward the sun just as it is risen or is about to set and found that they can barely see through a windshield <coughs> that seem to look okay in the middle of the day. Clean your windshield on the inside and outside for safe driving at night. Section 2.11.5 Night Driving Procedures Pre-trip procedures. Make sure you are rested and alert. If you are drowsy, sleep before you drive. Even a nap can save your life or the lives of others. If you wear eyeglasses, make sure they are clean and unscratched. Don't wear sunglasses at night. Do a complete pre-trip inspection of your vehicle. Pay attention to checking all lights and reflectors and cleaning those you can reach. Avoid blinding others. Glare from your headlights can cause problems for drivers coming toward you. They can also bother drivers going in the same direction you are when your lights shine in their rear view mirrors. Dim your lights before they cause glare for other drivers. Dim your lights within 500 feet of an oncoming vehicle and when following another vehicle within 500 feet. Avoid glare from oncoming vehicles. Do not look directly at lights of oncoming vehicles. Look slightly to the right 
has the right wing or edge marking if available. If other drivers don't put their low beams on, don't try to quote unquote get back at them by putting your own high beams on. This increases the glare for oncoming drivers and increases the chance of a crash. Use high beams when you can. Some drivers make the mistake of always using low beams. This seriously cuts down on their ability to see ahead. Use high beams when it's safe and legal to do so. Use them when you are not within 500 feet of an approaching vehicle. Also, don't let the inside of your cab get too bright. This makes it harder to see outside. Keep the interior light off and adjust your instrument lights as low as you can to still be able to read the gauges. If you get sleepy, stop at the nearest safe place. People often don't realize how close they are to falling asleep even when their eyelids are falling shut. If you can safely do so, look at yourself in a mirror. If you look sleepy, or if you just feel sleepy, stop driving. You are in a very dangerous condition. The only safe cure is to sleep. Otherwise, they may not 
sweep or sill properly. Make sure the windshield washer works and there is washing fluid in the washer reservoir. Use windshield washer antifreeze to prevent freezing of the washer liquid. If you can't see well enough while driving, for example, if your wipers fail, stop safely and fix the problem. Tires. Make sure you have enough tread on your tires. The drive tires must provide traction to push the rig over wet pavement and through the snow. If the steering tires must the steering tires must have traction to steer the vehicle. Enough tread is especially important in winter conditions. You must have at least four thirty seconds an inch tread depth in every major groove on front tires and at least two thirty two seconds inch on other tires. More would be better. Use a gauge to determine if you have enough tread for safe driving. Tire chains. You may find yourself in conditions where you can't drive without chains, even to get to a place safely. Carry the right number of chains and extra crosslinks. Make sure they will fit your drive tires. Check the t chains for broken hooks, worn or broken crosslinks, and bent or broken side chains. Learn how to put the chains on before you need to do it in snow and ice. Lights and reflectors. Make sure the lights and reflectors are clean. Lights and reflectors are especially important during bad weather. Check from time to time during bad weather to make sure they are clean and working properly. Windows and mirrors. Remove any ice, snow, etc. from the windshield, windows, and mirrors before starting. Use a windshield scraper, snow brush, and windshield defroster as necessary. Handholds, steps, and deck plates. Remove all ice and snow from handholds, steps, and deck plates. This will reduce the danger of slipping. Radiator shutters and winter front. Remove ice from the radiator shutters. Make sure the winter front is not closed too tightly. If the shutters freeze shut or the winter front is closed too much, the engine may overheat and stop. Exhaust system. Exhaust system leaks are especially dangerous when cab ventilation may be poor. Windows rolled up, etc. Loose connections could permit poisonous carbon monoxide to leak into your vehicle. Carbon monoxide gas will cause you to be sleepy. In large enough m amounts, it can kill you. Check the exhaust system for loose parts and for sounds and signs of leaks. Section 2.13.2 .2, Driving Slippery Surfaces Driving slowly and smoothly on slippery roads. If it is very slippery, you shouldn't drive at all. Stop at the first safe place. Start gently and slowly. When first starting, get the feel of the road. Don't hurry. Check for ice. Check for ice on the road, especially bridges and overpasses. A lack of spray from other vehicles indicates ice has formed on the road. Also, check your mirrors and wiper blades for ice. If they have ice, the road most likely will be icy as well. Adjust turning and braking to conditions. Make turns as gently as possible. Don't brake any harder than necessary and don't use the engine brake or speed retarder. They can cause the driving wheels to skid on slippery surfaces. Adjust speed to conditions. Don't pass slower vehicles unless necessary. 
Go slowly and watch far enough ahead to keep a steady speed. Avoid having to slow down and speed up. Take curves at slower speeds and don't break while in curves. Be aware that as the temperature rises to the point where ice begins to melt, the road becomes even more slippery. Slow down more. Adjust space to conditions. Don't drive alongside other vehicles. Keep a longer following distance. When you see the traffic jam ahead, slow down or stop to wait for it to clear. Try hard to anticipate stops early and slow down gradually. Watch for snow plows as well as salt and sand trucks and give them plenty of room. Wet brakes. When driving in heavy rain or deep standing water, your brakes will get wet. Water in the brakes can cause the brakes to be weak, to apply unevenly, or to grab. This can cause lack of braking power, wheel lockups, pulling to one side or the other, and jackknife if you pull a trailer. Avoid driving through deep puddles or flowing water if possible. If not, you should slow down and place transmission in low gear. Gently put on the brakes. This presses linings against brake drums or discs and keeps mud, silt, sand, and water from getting in. Increase engine RPM and cross the water while keeping light pressure on the brakes. When out of the water, maintain light pressure on the brakes for a short distance to heat them up and dry them out. Make a test stop when safe to do so. Check behind to make sure no one is following. Then apply the brakes to be sure they work well. If not, dry them out further as described above. Caution. Do not apply too much brake pressure and accelerator at the same time or you can overheat brake drums and linings. Section 2.14 Driving in very hot weather Section 2.14.1 Vehicle checks. Do a normal pre trip inspection, but pay special attention to the following items. Tires. Check the tire mounting and air pressure. Inspect the tires every two hours or every 100 miles when driving in very hot weather. Air pressure increases with temperature. Do not let air out of out or the pressure will be too low when the tires cool off. If a tire is too hot to touch, remain stopped until the tire cools off. Otherwise, the tire may blow out or catch fire. <laughs>